Well, hello. Today I'm going to show you how to pot up a cyperpedium uh, using some materials that uh, will help you grow it in a warmer climate, sometimes known as the double pot method uh, using wicking tape. So let's take a look here what we've got. This is called cryptomoss. Cryptomoss is a crushed uh, product, crushed bark of the Cryptomeria japonica tree or sugi tree. Here are the two pots. One pot is going to be the outer pot, which we will set the inner pot or the growing pot in. This material is uh, simply large chunks of natural charcoal. We have in here a uh, kind of fine pumice. Uh, here is the wicking tape and scissors, of course. There's a little creature. He's in here. I got him in the mail the other day. It's a Cyperpedium macranthus. Okay, well, the first thing I need to do is cut this uh, wicking tape into pieces, three pieces. Um, and the length of these pieces is going to be dependent on the size of the pot. So I want the tape to stick at least uh, about a finger length below the pot and maybe about a finger length up into the pot. So that's right around maybe 15 centimeters or maybe something like 16 inches. So go ahead and uh, cut that and then using that as a guide cut two more pieces of equal length. Now that we've done that we need to uh, place these right together uh, but what I like to do is to put them like this and because what we're going to do is we're going to fit this into the pot by sticking them in here and again about halfway down now I am going to splay them out equally in three directions more or less three directions and on top of that I'm going to place this little mesh uh, material plastic mesh to keep uh, material from falling out of the bottom of the pot now let's see if that looks good hold on yeah that's not bad the next step is um, of course making the compost the compost is quite simple it's uh, just this material which I told you before is called cryptomoss. As you can see, it's a very fibrous material. It's made from the bark of Cryptomeria japonica, Japanese red cedar. And um, it's crushed into this soft material that, even though it's completely organic, breaks down very slowly. So it's excellent for um, orchid roots, in particular, certain terrestrial orchids like uh, cyperpediums, to grow very nicely. Uh, promotes their growth beautifully and also remains very clean and sterile during the, through the growing period which is uh, necessary for these uh, plants especially here in this very hot climate also because of its structure it creates a very nice um, environment for water to move by capillary action uh, up the fibers into the roots thus keeping uh, the roots moist continually via the wicking tape and of course the wicking tape is going to be down in a reservoir of water so I'm going to do maybe about a mm, about a two to one mix favoring the cryptomoss let me go ahead and start pulling this out this is a medium grade you can get it finer and you can also get it a little bit coarser than this coarse is just too much especially for uh, small seedling or the young plant that I want to be planting into this so let's go ahead and mix this up okay well here's this lovely little plant this is as I said Cyperpidium macranthos it's actually a Ohotai Atsumorianum variety uh, called uh, Kamenash it's from the Kamenash region of Honshu and um, yeah Got two nice growth eyes, nice young healthy roots. Now again, because this is such a young plant, it's really going to be hard. But normally, with an adult plant, there'll be a distinct, uh, there'll be the crown kind of laying flat and these distinct roots going out. But 
these are kind of growing down so I don't want this sticking out of the pots I want to push this down a little bit here make some more room for them I want them to set a little deeper in the pot there we can push the roots out a little bit but we don't want to get too crazy we don't want to hurt the guy you can see the tape is right there so don't worry about the tape contacting the roots that's not going to affect it at all Go ahead and start filling in. I'm going to try to spread those roots a little bit. There we go. And again, don't get crazy, but you know, try to get medium right up in there so that he's completely covered. You know, some. a little bit of the uh, hummus against the roots, but again, don't worry too much. Just make sure it's a fit in there nice and snug. Now we're going to go ahead and cover him. Um, this is a pretty good sized plant, so I'm going to probably put at least a centimeter of uh, material above the uh, tip of the growing point. I don't want him ever to dry out. That's a big no-no with any cyprothedium, especially with young seedling like this. By the way, this is probably a plant that's about two years, maybe three years off flowering, depending upon how well I grow it. So here you can see I've created this uh, slight mound in the center there. It's not necessary, but I like to do that. We want to leave a little bit of space here because I'm going to put pure uh, pumice on top of this in order to um, keep uh, the light reflecting off it in the summertime, not absorbing any more heat than it has to. Okay, we're entering the final stage here. Here you can see I have just a typical plastic dish. It's maybe, uh, I don't know, half a finger deep or so. And uh, in this is going to go the pot that is going to hold the other pot. Now, this is going to be inundated, of course, because the whole point of having this arrangement is that you have water in the reservoir continuously so it is unnecessary for you to uh, have to do anything but add water to the reservoir and very occasionally to go ahead and um, take the water out and uh, put in new water and clean the system up because occasionally it'll get you know, pretty messy after a while here you can see the tape sticking out from the growing pot you don't have to worry about how those little things are, those little tapes are oriented. They're going to be down in the water, and that's all that matters. This is set directly into the uh, outer pot, and in this way, the water will wick its way up. Okay, well, uh, here are three Cypripedium henrii that are going to be uh, potted up today, but uh, since they were such mishandled creatures, you might remember these from a previous video I had on uh, what to look for when buying sip stock. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to uh, plant these guys out in a double pot method and uh, and then later on in the year we're going to see how they do. Uh, this guy's starting to grow here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put them into a uh, into a ventilate bath for maybe around 20 minutes. Uh, here's another one looking pretty good. I've cut away all the dead and dying material. So let's go ahead and uh, put him... Got to get him to sink in there pretty good. Good. And the last one here uh, did pretty poorly. Um, the new growth uh, died, but you can see there's a little bud in there, so there is a chance that he will grow again. So we'll go ahead and throw him in there too. Well, here are the plants uh, several months later. It's nearly May. Uh, this is the Hote Atsumoriso, or Hote Atsumarianum, or Kranthos variety. Uh, potted and uh, I don't have them in the water reservoir yet because it's not um, yet hot out but once the heat cooks on maybe late May I'll go ahead and get them in the reservoir and I'll show you that in the next clip 
Uh, here is the uh, Henry Eye. Two plants. Uh, you know, they're doing okay, but you can tell just looking at them that they're uh, they're stressed. But uh, be interesting to see if I can revive those this year. Well, here we are in late January, so it's time to repot these plants again. So let me go ahead and take them out of the pots, and then I will uh, show you how they did. So cross your fingers that they did well this year. Okay, well, here's the uh, Hote Atsumorianum. Um, as you can see, its roots are in quite good condition and has three new growth buds. Um, by and large, I'm quite happy the way that this one lived through the summer. Uh, finally, here are the Henrii, which have done actually remarkably well. You can see this one has gone from one bud to two buds. It has a number of new roots here, which is good. And the old roots uh, remarkably look pretty good. So this plant's ready to plant out again, uh, almost as is. Um, the other plant that uh, grew uh, leaves this year did uh, pretty well too. Got some new roots here, again two new buds. And remarkably, the one, remember, where the bud rotted off, uh, well, it created a little bud, even though it did not grow any uh, above ground growth this year. There are no new roots, but uh, there is a chance that this one will make it as well. So all in all, not bad. Okay, well now it's time to get these plants back uh, potted up again in fresh media. Um, they will be treated with uh, fungicide to um, make sure that uh, they're okay. Um, it's interesting to note that this summer was one of the hottest on record. In fact, it was the hottest on record uh, for a 100-year record we've had here in the Fukuoka City area in southern Japan with both July and August coming in on average over uh, 30 degrees Celsius, which is about 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, remind you that that's uh, day and night temperatures averaged together. So daytime temperatures were in the mid to low 30s every day for the two-month period plus. Uh, that's like up into the low to mid 90s Fahrenheit, with temperatures only dropping into the high 70s at most at night. So. It shows that this method of uh, growing um, temperate plants in a less than perfect climate is actually quite successful if you're persistent at it.